talking about the grammar yoni. Yoni. Now, I am actually working right now on Japanese from Zero, book five, and I realized, wow, we never taught yoni in any part of any book yet. And I thought, wow, well, this is such an easy grammar. Why wasn't it in there? Then I started making this PowerPoint for this Japanese daily, and I realized why. Because this is an extremely complicated can be, at least, confusing grammar because it's similar to many other grammar. So today, the main goal is yoni. And again, if you watch the Japanese in five series, you know that I take only five minutes, but today, you better sit down and take some time. This might take a little bit of time, like 10 minutes maybe. All right, so there are three types of yo. Okay, there are, in other words, three grammars that have yo in them that are so similar sounding that if you're not paying attention, you, you might mistranslate it. Let's look at the first one. It is maru maru, right? Circle, circle, yo. Circle, circle just is like, a, like saying a blank, like blah, blah, okay? So this is like saying something yo is for the use of something, okay? For example, maybe there is a type of food and it looks really delicious, but it's actually inu yo. It's for dogs. Or maybe it's dobutsu yo, for animals. It just, you just put this yo, and this is the kanji for it. The yo comes immediately after the word. That's a very important point to note. There's nothing between the word and yo. It's directly after it. So inu yo means, now typically, by the way, you might know that if you have two kanjis together, typically you read the Chinese reading or the onyomi. This is not the case. Here it is, inuyo. It's not kenyo. Okay? So anyway, remember this. Let's give it an example now. Kono betto wa inuyo desu. Kono betto wa inuyo desu. This bed is for dogs. That's exactly what that means. Of course, there's other ways to say this. You could say, Kono betto wa inu no tame no betto desu. Is a bed on behalf of the dog. But this is a simple way to do it using yo. Kono betto wa inu yo desu. This dog, this dog, this bed is for dogs, all right? Another thing, if you all have an iPhone and you're buying accessories in Japan, you might need to look for something like this. iPhone yo, for the iPhone, okay? It might say five or six. It's important, right? Especially if you're buying a case, you want it to say iPhone six yo. Sometimes you'll see compatible, it's another, where it's taiyo with a completely different kanji, but just know that this will work too. You could say, for example, iPhone yo no case ga arimasu ka? Do you have cases for the iPhone? Or iPhone 6 no case ga arimasu ka? Oh, matter of fact, here's a, here's a good one. Because we have those cables, right? You have that cable for charging. So maybe you need a cable, you went to Japan, you forgot it. iPhone yo no cable ga arimasu ka? Right? Do you have a cable for iPhone? All right, now let's look at a second yo, and by the way, the second yo doesn't have kanji. But when you're listening, you can't hear kanji. So all you're going to hear is yo. That's why this is a really possible point of confusion for when you're speaking Japanese. So now it's something no yo, okay? Like a something, okay? So let's look at an example. Inu no yo ni means like a dog. It is not inu Yoni. That would mean four dogs, right? So it's inu no. You must have the no. Okay? Let's look at a possible sentence here. Inu no yoni hoete kudasai. Bark like a dog. Or in the fashion of a dog. In the way of a dog is what this yo is doing, okay? Bark like a dog. Now let's look at these two grammars side by side and see why it can be confusing. Okay, if we have this first sentence here, which is just, actually it's a complete sentence, okay. iPhone no yo ni tsukutta. iPhone no yo ni tsukutta. Tsukutta means to make. This first one means I made it like an iPhone. I made it in the same way of an iPhone, okay. Or iPhone yo ni tsukutta. Now it means I made it for iPhones. And the only difference is the no. Okay, that can be confusing. But I know some of you who are advanced are thinking, wait a minute, the way to say like something is not yo or no yo. 
you're thinking it's this one, mitai, right? And yeah, you can use this. They're pretty much similar, okay, in many ways similar. For example, you could say, instead of inu no yoni, you could say, inu mitai ni hoete kudasai, right? Which means, like a dog, bark, bark like a dog. Now, let's look at all of these together and let's look at, again, why this can be confusing, right? We have inu no yoni, like a dog, or in the same way as a dog. Then you've got inu yoni, which means for a dog. There's just no no there. But look at inu mitai ni. It also means for, but it doesn't have the no. And you would never have the no. You would never say inu no mitai ni. That's confusing, right? These very similar grammar don't have the no. I mean, one has the no and one doesn't. And then the one that's completely different doesn't have the no. Psh, mind explosion. Okay, so hopefully that helped a little bit. You have to practice a little bit. But if you did grasp it up until now, I'm getting ready to again destroy your understanding of what yo is because now we're going to get to the main point that I'm trying to teach, which is this one. Now, it doesn't make sense here really, but a yo ni b, right? It's do b so that a, or in order to a, do b. Okay, this is what we're getting ready to do. Doesn't make sense until you get to some example sentences. So for example, kaeru you ni tabemasu. I mean tamemasu, sorry, I said eat. But tamemasu means to save or to save money, right? So English and Japanese typically are backwards and this is one where this is backwards even though they're saying to buy, save. You're really saying I will save so that I can buy. It's a very simple sentence. Normally it would be a much longer sentence with what are you going to buy and you're, that you're going to save actual money. You would put the word in there. You would say something like, Kuruma ga kaeru yo ni okane o tamemasu. I will save money in order to or so that I can buy a car, you would say. All right, let's look at this next one. So let's say you're learning Japanese and you have your first Skype phone call with a girl that you met on innerpals.net. And you're pretty nervous and you screwed up. Well, you could end your phone call with this. Moto hanaseru yo ni renshu shimasu. Moto hanaseru yo ni renshu shimasu. I will practice so that I can speak more. Do you see how that works? The, the thing that you're going to do to accomplish, the thing that you're going to do is at the end, the thing you're trying to accomplish is in the beginning. All right. All right. Let's look at another good example. Because up until now, we've only used to be able to do forms. I'm just going to show you that it doesn't have to be a to be able to do form. All right. You could say, Kobosanai yo ni tabete kudasai. Kobosanai yo ni tabete kudasai. I might say this to my daughter when she's like two. Hey, eat so that you don't eat in a way that you won't spill. Right. Please eat so that you don't spill it. Kobosu. Okay. Kobosanai. Kobosanai yoni. All right. You could just say, for example, if your daughter is eating, you could just look over and go, Kobosanai yoni ne. Hey, so that you don't spill it. It's like saying, make sure you don't. Kobosanai yoni. And I could just put a stay there. Kobosanai yoni ste. Do it so that you don't. Do it in a way where you don't spill. All right. All right. And here's another good one. Using that tamete kudasai again and using okane properly, like we wanted to use the other one. Let's say you're saving up money so that you can go to Japan. Nihon ni ikeru you ni okane o tamete kudasai. Actually, someone says that to you. Save money so that you can be able to go to Japan. All right. Now, just to make it even more complicated, because this up until now has all been things that you do, but what if it's you ni naru, which is a very common Thing you'll hear there's yoni suru, yoni any verb, but then yoni naru is a little bit different. This is where you're saying the situation has changed to this. All right, so let's look at an example. All right, Nihongo hanase ara. Nihongo hanaseru yoni narimashita. I couldn't even say it, I don't know what happened, but now I can, right? I my situation has changed. A second ago, I couldn't speak Japanese. It looks like I'm a genius now, but that was completely not on purpose. I really couldn't say the sentence. But in this case, what happened? I became able to speak Japanese, and you must have yoni naru here. 
That's how you say the state changed. I didn't used to be able to, but now I can. It doesn't mean that when you translate it, you say I didn't used to be able to. But it's implied when you say, oh, I can speak Japanese now. When we say that in English, I can speak Japanese now, it means you couldn't speak it before. Same thing here. Nihongo wo hanaseru yo ni narimashita. I have become able to speak Japanese. Alright, let's look at another one. Nihon ni ikeru yo ni narimashita. Maybe before you had some school problems and you weren't able to go to Japan or you didn't have enough money or your parents weren't going to let you and you're relaying to your friend that I couldn't go before but you know what? The situation has changed. Hey, guess what? Nihon ni ikeru yo ni narimashita. Now I can go to Japan. You don't need the ima. But the now is completely how we would say it in English. All right, now is the final sentence that's coming up here. And this sentence is going to be your challenge sentence. What you're going to do is, if this video is on YouTube, and it might be, post in the comments on YouTube what you think this translation is, the next sentence. Or if it's on just Japan, comment the answer. I will never give the answer. You guys work this out amongst yourselves. And here is the sentence. Uchi no neko ga inu yo no betto de I'll look at the comments. All right, if you'd like to learn more Japanese, and at this level you already have book one, but we have books one, two, three, and four available on Amazon, and you can join yesjapan.com for absolutely free and take all of course one. Hope to see you all next time, next Friday on the yesjapan.com Japanese Zero live stream. Bye bye.